Ideally, when you begin an animate document, you'll set the document size or document settings to have a width and height that will match the output resolution that you intended for your animation. So if I wanted to output for 1280 by 720 video, for example, I'd start my size at 1280 by 720. And therefore my stage size is exactly what I want. I have a one to one ratio there and I can simply export at the appropriate size. However, sometimes you need to scale your content. Maybe I started at 1280 by 720, but wanted to upscale it to 1920 by 1080, for example, an aspect ratio that is the same, but larger than the uh, last size, right? So I could scale these things around, or maybe I needed to take a document and scale it down, let's say for a phone size or something. You might need to do that. And so as an example with this document, maybe what I'd like to do is prepare it for kind of an iPhone size of 375 by 812, a pretty common phone dimension for the viewport of a phone. So I'd like a width of 375 and a height of 812. How might I go about moving or scaling my content to achieve that? So the first place to look is in the document settings that actually shows your width and height sizes. If you click on more settings, you'll notice that you can uh, open this up and have some additional options for anchoring and scaling content. So that's great. Another thing that we have an option for is matching our size to the contents of our animation. So I've got this background graphic that's quite a bit larger, that's not in frame. If I click match contents, it would actually change the scale of this based on the background that are there, like all the content that I have. I don't want that. I don't want it to change the scale in that way. So I'll, I'll cancel that part of it. And I can get back to those document settings uh, under modify document or clicking on the more settings option there. Uh, so one thing I'd like to do is potentially scale my content uniformly. If I click on the scale content option, it's going to maintain the aspect ratio of my content and I can change the size. So if I change the height to 812, Again, for the height of a phone, for example, it'll change the width at the same time and all of that content should scale. I should go ahead and be able to click OK and you'll notice that all of the content kind of scaled up just a little bit uh, in this case and the whole size is now a little bit larger. Everything should still be in the same spot in terms of the animation and end in the same basic relative places. So all of that is still present within here in terms of what's happening with, with our animation. So that worked. Um, but I want to do a little bit more than that. I also want to clip off some of the width of this. So again, I might want to go to more settings to take a look at that. And in this case, I don't want the content itself to scale when I change the page size. And what I'd like to do is cut down the width pretty substantially to 375, which is the size on a phone. So I'll go ahead and change that size and I can choose an anchor for how I would sort of anchor this content so that it sort of cuts it in the spaces that I want. If I want it to be anchored from the center, I could anchor it right along the center lines here. Um, and so depending on how some of your graphics are done, this selection can work with a, what's called nine slice scaling, allowing you to specify how scaling is applied to like specific areas of a movie clip, so what I really want is to scale just on the left and right and have the center line all equal here. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and you'll notice that it should it basically, it's, it, it's going to um, clip from the center. So the center should be somewhere right here and the, the sides should both come in. That's going to cut off part of the arm that's there. If I didn't want that, I could always scale this maybe to be along one side, for example. So instead, I could choose to cut content from that right side of everything um, and see how that sort of works. And that would align this to that, that right edge. Let's try that. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here. And you'll notice that our, oops, our content scaled proportionally here. So I didn't want that. I didn't want to change both the, um, the width and the height. So I'm going to unlock the scale content, but also uncheck the aspect. I, I had this checked. So when I change the width, then the height also changed. So I'm going to uncheck that so that this is 375 in width, but the height maintains itself. And I wanted that to root along that right edge. Let's try that again. 
right click and you'll see that's exactly what happened. My stage here is now right here. And I could click on this button to clip my content. It's kind of see what what is on stage and really be clear about what's on stage and what's off. And I rooted that to the right hand side. Of course, now the monkey is a little off stage. Maybe it doesn't quite fit at this aspect ratio. And I might need to do a few more things to kind of put this into frame. There's a couple tricks that will allow you to do that sort of more easily. Now, I already have the document kind of at the size that I wanted, so uh, in order to move things around, I might need to select all the frames I have and literally move them, or potentially add a sort of camera to this and use the camera to do panning and scaling in the way that I want. So I'm gonna show you both of those uh, methodologies. So in order to select all of my content, I need to use the edit multiple frames option here. And I need to make sure that everything I wanna select is not locked. So sometimes what I'll do with edit multiple frames is I'll lock those layers I don't wanna edit and unlock the layers I do. I'll click on the edit multiple frames option and then with the onion skin span that's up here, I wanna make sure that I have that across the entire document, right? So that I'm seeing all of the frames from when I started to sort of when I ended here. Um, so I have that entire span. Then what I'm gonna do is use a select all, so Control A or Command A on Mac, so that I will select all of my content. And that will select all of those frames all at once. This will allow me to actually use my move tool to move those around, and they'll all move at the same time. I could also use my arrow keys to move things around. So. In theory, if I had a specific amount I knew I wanted to move everything, I could also even type that in or use this position and size option. This might be good if I was working, let's say I was working on multiple different scenes or something and I needed to do this on multiple scenes, just dragging this around, I might not know exactly what the numbers would be. But if I use like a, a certain, okay, I really want this to go sort of left or right, right, and I can kind of see what what those numbers might be. Um, so maybe I wanna bring the, the monkey kind of mostly into the center in this particular case. I could see what th those numbers kind of look like inside of this. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. But you know, maybe what I wanna do is basically move it over by you know, 80 pixels or something. So what I could do is subtract 80 from this current position and so and that's going to make this um, 467.4. And so I could type in those particular numbers, say 467.4. That would be one way that I can move it. And I know, okay, in each scene, I'm gonna move over by 80 or something like that. Of course, I'm also able literally with everything selected just to drag things around and kind of figure out a center point where I actually want that particular content. So we can take a look at what that looks like. Once I'm done, I'll uncheck the edit multiple frames so I'm only seeing things in one frame at a time. And that, you'll see that the monkey is a little bit more centered in terms of this content now. And it does start on the left side, but as it scales here, it's going to be more in the center of the frame as I had intended. Now, another way that I might have played with this instead of moving everything, so what I'm gonna do is, is undo a couple times. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to sort of un, undo this movement piece that, that had happened for me um, so that all of that content was back sort of where it was on the side, right? Sort of little off center. And so instead of using the edit multiple frames to move all of those, another thing I could do is add my camera feature. If I make sure that my document settings are enabled and I'm using advanced layers there, that that's checked, then you'll have the option to add a camera. And one of the things the camera allows you to do is actually pan the entire scene. So now that I have the camera in there, what I could do is just actually grab this and sort of move this around to position this into the sort of space that I want. So the camera is always like pan to the left basically. And so the whole frame now is, is sort of moved just by moving the one camera. And it would allow me too to do things like zooming in or whatever, like I could actually zoom in into that content or and even animate those transitions. But 
when I export this content out, it's all going to be more centered as well, which might be a very easy way to actually take the entire stage and sort of move it around by just enabling that sort of camera feature to do that rather than trying to move every individual frame um, in order to make this work. So those are some options for resizing that content. I can now publish this out, make, making sure that my content is within the frame as I expected at the new scale that I had intended for this um, actual animation. Yo, lip thinking is cool, man. So there it was at a larger size because I'm only looking at it at 50% scale, but it's a kind of cell phone video size now. Um, as I had intended, I was able to change my entire document size to the new size, scaling content, shifting content around as I needed. So good luck adjusting your content for the screen sizes and output resolutions that you intend.